from the last video I made my custom crown stop if you remember and I showed how to make that so in this video I'm just gonna set this thing up and show you how it works in action if you remember from the last video though this thing was about a sixteenth short of being flush with the tabletop of the miter saw and what I did to solve that was I put a little sixteenth inch washer in there and this thing is now perfectly flush and level with the tabletop of the saw and it would have worked without being perfectly flush and level but since I'm gonna have this here anyways why not make it a support for the material and it'll just give me more precision so that's what I've done since the last video I raised this up to shim it up a little bit and then I also made an exact dead-on replica of that crown stop right there so now I have two of them and in this video I want to show you how this works and I also want to answer a few questions and go through some of the uh, comments that were made about that last video because I think a lot of people didn't really understand what I was doing because I only made half of the jig and they were like saying I needed to put two bolts and asking some other questions but that's what I want to clarify just to be clear I was not making one of these the whole plan initially was to make two I was just making one to make sure it worked before I spent the time making the second one so that's where we're at on this now I want to show you how these things are perfectly flush across the tabletop of the saw there is no play in this at all it's not teeter-tottering so we're good there everything is nice and flush I'm really happy that's done and one thing I've done with the crown stop setup for my sacrificial fence is I went and got a piece of one by six by eight PVC this is PVC board so it's a true straight line everything's true about it, it does doesn't have any moisture content obviously it's not gonna warp or twist it like anything like real wood not that that would really even be a problem with the crown stops but I just thought it'd be cool to make this out of PVC and see how long I can make it last but in the future I probably will just use like a one by six poplar or something but uh, I thought this would look cool and I wanted to give it a shot and I already made some cuts in it because I was messing around with this last night but I'm going to set this up in the PVC board I just countersink with the Forstner bit enough for the depth of the nut and the washer and I'll go ahead and put those on so the washer drops in and then and the nut will just twist on that so another question I want to address that came up in the last video regarding this jig is that why didn't I use some kind of knob like this and leave that bolt longer then it'd be easier to just have that um, where I could just tighten it down and that is a good idea uh, I've seen people do that but the only thing about it for me is I actually when I make a cut like I have this 45 miter right here on this crown I actually lay it flat on this um, sacrificial fence when I'm typically doing this on my old version and I'll stretch the tape out I didn't want this in the way and my tape kind of folding over so that is the main reason I didn't want a knob there and I wanted that recessed and flush because I want a flush work surface where I could stretch the tape out so hopefully that answers that question just a personal preference thing you could do that with a star knob like that it's just something that I thought about and I didn't want to do now the next thing um, I'll show you how this slides this thing slides absolutely amazing it's so smooth I did have to put some gel lubricant in the track to get it to slide a lot better because initially when I had the two and I was messing with this yesterday it was pretty stiff so I put some spray and stay gel lubricant in there and it's just exactly that it stays wherever you put it and it, you don't have to keep re-lubricating it so I'll see how that holds up with dust flying and everything like that and let you know in the future but what I intend to do and I'll show you this because this was another thing that came up I'm just gonna cut a piece of this poplar off just to, for an example So this block that I just cut, let's pretend like this is a ceiling projection for a crown molding. This would be a pretty small crown, but let's throw it in. This is how easy this jig should be to use on the job site. So you have your ceiling projection block. 
you slide up the jig to it and then once it's flush you just tighten it down and then you take it to this side and then you tighten it down now another question people had is why didn't I use two bolts here and the reason for that is because you want to be able to pivot this so you can get both sides equally flush so I could tighten this side down and then put this in there and then just push against it and I can I should be able to get this completely flush or what I could do is just rip a long ceiling projection block on the table saw push them both against it and then tighten them both down while I have it pushed up against this so hopefully that answers the question about why I didn't use two bolts here and I only used one because you really don't need the two bolts and as a matter of fact it'd probably be a detriment to the setup because you won't have that pivot effect so let's go ahead and pretend like this is a crown block I just cut that randomly the tool is stored back here which if you remember from the last video that was my favorite part <laughs> I was pretty motivated and pumped up about that because this will always be on the saw and like many people said as soon as I say that I'm gonna lose the tool and let's hope that's not true <laughs> but uh, yeah it should always be there so with that the crown jig is set up you simply just put your tool back and I think this is my favorite part so you could take this thing off in one piece and set it aside if you don't need it that is this is super cool you've got to be like a trim carpenter to appreciate how cool this is i know it sounds like a dork right now but this is just so awesome it's just so cool so you could just put this back in and then so another question that people had was won't my miter saw cut through this fence well obviously it could because it's a sliding miter saw it could cut all the way to this point but if you have the saw pushed all the way back and then lock it down it's not going to cut through the material so we'll set this up with a real crown i'll loosen it and then i'll show you exactly what i mean so you just loosen it like two turns really of that little wrench and then i'll grab this colonial this is a crown we use a lot because we do a lot of uh, builder grade stuff so we'll go in and match whatever the builder did builders are usually using this little four and a quarter colonial and then they're putting it in like some areas like the common areas but not the bedrooms so we'll go in and like put it in the bedrooms so we'll just for sake of time we won't make this perfect but I'll just get this tightened down in the ballpark of that ceiling projection for this crown so that's good and then actually let me put this tool back so now that that's set up somewhat if I want to keep this zero line right here all I have to do is slide the crown stop over and then come down on it and I'll be right in the zero line still so I've cut a 45 on this, this side and I cut a zero degree let's go ahead and cut a 45 this way and I'll show you I'll take the jig off and show you how much meat of the board is left and that it's not going to cut through So now I have common cuts. Obviously these are going to be tweaked as I make adjustments in the real world. Like I need to cut a 46 degree or whatever. And then I'm going to have my 22.5s in kind of, these areas are pretty much the most common, commonly used cuts that we do for crown. But we have our outside 45 degree miter. And then let me take the jig off and show you. So you can see from the top view it cuts about maybe halfway on the zero but if you look on the back side we're barely getting into this board with the full cut so there's no risk of cutting through this board fully unless you make a mistake and pull the sliding saw towards you and I may even switch to a fixed saw like a just a 10 inch fixed saw for crown but I still haven't decided. And then I'm thinking of an, another way to calibrate this 
to where I can get it back to zero every time. Maybe put like a mark on the saw with a Sharpie, just put one right there and then I could set the jig in and know that I'm gonna be perfect on zero. Like right there, I've gotta slide it a little bit more to the right. It's not a big deal, but it would probably make the sacrificial board last a lot longer. So I don't really know how I feel about this PVC, but I thought I'd give it a shot and we'll, we'll see how it goes. So that's pretty much the crown jig setup. And this thing is easy to make. I'm pretty pumped up about this. I'm gonna be using it out in the field and let you know how I feel about it. But this came together exactly how I wanted it to. Now, the next thing in my dilemma of miter saw support, this is taken care of, the crown stop done. And the next thing is I need to set up some kind of support going both ways. I don't know, maybe eight feet both ways. I think that would probably be a good, a good um, measurement for support on the right side and the left side. That I have some ideas on, but I, I'm going to ask for some help because I think there's a lot of people out there with like an engineer's mind that I don't really have, but I have some ideas that I think are going to be pretty cool. The first idea is going to be to take one of these smaller DeWalt stands and set it up on this side, on, on actually both sides of the saw stand. So we'd have one like this. And I actually think this is a little bit taller than that one. I need to measure and make sure. I'm gonna eliminate these. These are gonna be eliminated, I'm pretty sure. I was taking one apart last night and trying to figure out how I can incorporate it, but I think I'm just gonna eliminate it altogether which means I'll probably eliminate this square tubing here too because it's just adding weight to the stand. And if I eliminate this, I'm not gonna need that. The reason I wanna eliminate that is because I got some more brackets. And my plan for these is very similar to my plan with the crown stops. I want to put one here in the same orientation reversed. This right here says front. They usually go like that because the saw sets back like that. But I need most of my support in the front area. I don't need support back there. That's because the saw needs support back there. But I want a bigger tabletop surface here where I can lay a trim down, stretch a tape over it and, and get to work. So I think if I put one here and one here, and I can lay a board, an eight foot board of some kind of support board. I don't know what I'm gonna use yet. And then I can attach that board using these same aluminum extrusions and slide the board on and I'll have a big work surface and tighten it down the same way I tighten the crown stops down. I could probably set this whole thing up in literally a matter of less than a minute with, with the way that I'm thinking about it. Now, here's the kicker. Here's what's gonna be the main thing. This is where I need help. I'm never working on a perfectly level surface. I mean, right here in my driveway where this drain area is, it's really, this is pretty exaggerated for what we're usually working on, but this could be a possibility where we're working on something that's very slanted, usually on a sidewalk or a driveway that's slanted. So I need to make, Think of a way to make some micro adjustments. Hold on a second. Let me grab a extrusion and show you what I'm talking about. So I plan to, and this, will, this could change based on the information and feedback I get, but I plan to pretty much set up the same way, but I wanna make some kind of knob where I can micro adjust this to raise it and lower it to, to accommodate uneven surfaces. Some kind of knob I've even thought of like, so I even thought of so using something like this. This is my tripod and it wouldn't be using the tripod, but some kind of mechanism like this where you loosen this and then you can raise this thing up. So in theory, this would be mounted there some way and then I could raise it up, but it's still mounted on this bracket underneath. So there would have to be some kind of spring or some kind of support so it doesn't teeter like this but 
that's kind of my idea. So if I'm if I need to go up or down, I can do it with this, and then I can tighten this down. I don't know how practical that is going to be to incorporate that into something like this, and that's why I'm asking for help. But I think if I can put this together, it'll be an amazing setup for me and exactly what I need. One other thing, hold on. Another idea I had was taking, this is a hold down for the Milwaukee saw. It goes into the back of the miter saw and it can clamp down things to hold it in. I just grabbed this one off the shelf. But another idea I had was to drill a hole through this, get a longer bolt, but it'd be the same idea. It'd be a, a star knob like this coming up through a rivet nut in the base of this bracket. So it essentially come up through there. It'd have to go all the way to the bottom and you would be able to basically, uh, as you twist this up like that, this would, this would be under here. It'd be a long threaded bolt. You twist this up and then it would raise this up and lower it as you needed. Those are the, my two best ideas. I don't know how I'm gonna incorporate that tripod thing. I honestly think this is gonna be my best bet because that looks like some pretty crazy over engineering. However, if it worked, it would be awesome. So again, that would be, this would stay in the saw and then you would just drop it in and just line it up and then raise it. Those are my two ideas. If you have any other ideas, Please let me know if you have any suggestions. Email me, richard at finishcarpentry.tv. Also, if you're on Instagram, just send me a message there because I'm really looking for a way to take this thing to the next level. Oh, also, another question was, how am I gonna make a stop block mechanism? Well, again, I wanna mount this extrusion probably to that extrusion and have some kind of stop block mechanism in this T-Track that I can just flip over and th that seems like that'd be pretty easy to make. We'd have a stop sliding through here, it'd flip over, rest on the support so you'd have repeatable cuts. We could probably incorporate um, a tape measure on here and make sure we have it zeroed. So it's pretty much going to be done with this aluminum extrusion stuff. So if this works out really the way I want it to, I should be able to set this thing up in under a minute, maybe a little bit more for adjusting the level knobs, whatever mechanism I come up with. But it should really be pull this large stand out, pop open the legs, set it down, throw the miter saw on it, pull the short ones out, set those on the side, bring the crown stop jig, set this down, it's in place. And the support boards for the wings that go to the right and to the left would be that easy to put on. It would just be taking the two brackets, putting them in, go to the other side, take the two brackets, put them in, have some kind of spring mechanism here, adjust it from the bottom with a straight edge, you're done. So let me know what you think, but that's where I'm at right now.